Good evening folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's full time reaction from Tanadice to Dundee United now Celtic 2. I've got Martin with me to go over it. Uh, Martin, another win, another clean sheet. Would you make of that one tonight? I thought it was a, a good enough performance. A, a, a performance in which we dominated possession. We created a number of chances. Um, never looked like scoring nine like we did the last time, but just I suppose the only frustrating thing was we didn't get a goal well enough in the game to settle the nerves a little bit. Well, players didn't look unsettled at all, but some of the fans just want that earlier goal. But um, result never in doubt for me. If I'm being honest, personally, I didn't feel that nervous. But uh, aye, job done. Mm. Job done. Kyogo has a chance 30 seconds in. He's another one uh, later in a half. We get the penalty. I think Kyogo wins it. Everybody's going to want to talk about it. We've only seen it once live. Uh, would you make it? Uh, at the game, I thought it was a penalty. I suppose you're, you're, you're a wee bit biased there. You've got the green, uh, green tinted glasses on. Um, you kind of know though when the referee gets called over, gets called over to look at the screen, the chances are it's going to get called off. No. Um, but it was a hard one to call, obviously, a, a coming together. But um, I've not seen it again. I've not seen it again to be absolutely convinced. But the game, I must admit, I did mm. think it was a penalty. Mm. Uh, in the second half, as you say, you don't want the game going too long now. No. I think Dundee United made that battle in the first half. Fletcher was winning a few flick ons when they did get the ball up the pitch. Um, we get the breakthrough, they'll get a bit of luck. Aaron Moy, uh, deep cross, ends up going in at the back post. Uh, yeah. I, uh, at the time, genuinely hand on heart, I thought, I wonder if he, I wonder if he meant that. I wonder if it was a, you know, a, a bit of a um, speculative shot. Mm -hmm. But there was players at the back post as well. So I think, you know, for being honest, it was probably more of a, mm -hmm. more of a pass. I mean, it was he was practically on the touchline, wasn't he? So yeah. it would have been some, some, uh, some attempt at goal. Um, but I was just nicked in at the back post and, and came across the, came across the box. But. That just settled the nerves. I thought I felt a goal was coming. In fact, in the first half, I felt a goal was coming. We we'll really penned them into their 18-yard box, and it was. I thought their keeper was particularly good in the mm, first half was, as well. Yeah. He had a number of good saves, so um, it was just good to get that breakthrough. Because thought, don't tell us it's going to be one of those days where their mm. keeper's going to have save after save after save. Um, but after that, the, the result was never in doubt. Mm. Five minutes later, we do get a penalty, and it is for handball. Believe it or not, um, we do get penalties for handball every now and again. Again, only once live. It did look like um, he handballed it. And Moy steps up, puts it away. He's he's on for top scorer, Aaron Moy at this rate, isn't he? <laughs> the guys I was sitting beside, they were convinced in in lifetime. Yeah, yeah I must admit, I, I, I missed the, the handball, but they were convinced it was handball, and of course the penalty was given. Um, just not not the player. I mean, I know he's our penalty taker now, mm. but not the player you'd expect to be your penalty taker. But um, he's just full of confidence. He's got a wee swagger in him just now. Eh? Where when he first joined us, I think there was a lot of fans saying, you know, wasn't he going to be good enough for Celtic? But he just looks like he's he's. Uh, well, don't, we, we won't know whether he's one of the first names on the team sheet, but it's, it certainly looks like he should be one of the first. And yeah. he's made that place his own now, and he's been pushed out. And uh, he's, he's, he's chipping in with the goals mm. as well. But his all round play is pretty, pretty mm. consistent now. Aye, I think that's a sign of his progress that he's keeping somebody like O'Reilly out of the team. I know his form did dip, but um, still a great player. So, so to be keeping him out of the team uh, speaks volumes for him. Um, Johnson. Right back, Jovanovic is gone. Yakimakis looks like he's away. We've seen a debut for O off the bench. Do you think this is going to be a bit of a test for the team? Because it's the first time under Postacoglu we've lost one or two key players and we've got guys in to replace them. And I don't know how, I don't know how true this is, but somebody said to me yesterday that uh, Jackie Marcus was testing the water. You know, things weren't mm. quite coming, um, coming to fruition with regards to where he may or may not have been going in, in the early part of the, the transfer talks. And apparently there was, there was there was discussion around the potential for him to stay. Mm. And I, I believe the response from the manager was, no, you've, you've told us you want to go, mm. so you're going. Um, I don't know how much truth is in that because you know a lot of these things get, um, get arms and legs get added. But if that's true, I'm, I'm really really pleased because I've heard the manager saying his early, early, earlier tenure that he wants the right people to come to the club, so the right personality mm. type, they'll fit in with the culture. All about commitment, isn't he? All about commitment. Mm. You know, he's not asking them to sign forever. I mean, you look at his track record; he's not wanting to stay at a club forever, but he doesn't even want those mercenaries coming to the club. Mm. I'm not saying that Jack and Max are mercenary. I, I kind of understand to some extent his predicament. He doesn't feel he's got enough game time. Mm. But when it comes to the money side of things with him, you know, he hasn't been with us that long. Mm. So when you first sign that contract, what sort of conversations are there around how materially that contract will change yeah. over such a short period of time? For me, some of these players, it's totally unrealistic to think that, you're, that the amount of money you'll be paid will double or treble in, mm. in a short period of time, mm. where you have had a reasonable, a reasonable um, performance. But yeah. I, I think some of them are unrealistic. And obviously the club and Ange have agreed on, on that front and offered them something that he's not happy with. But... He's made up his mind he wants to go and he goes with, with well wishes. We had a bit of debate about Juranovic and you know yeah. his commitment to the club or or, he's, or not being committed to the club and going away for a, a moderate fee to mm. a club that we would consider not to be as big as Celtic. Maybe we're kidding ourselves on, but I think if the guys want to go, 
it's great that you know when you think back to the Boyata saga and several other players who've, who've the club have held on to for far too long or the managers said absolutely no chance I'm not allowing them to leave I much prefer the scenario where if they want to go let them go mm. and we'll bring in guys that want to be at the club Yeah, What have you made Alistair Johnson so far? I like him I like him and, and loads of people I've spoken to are much the same they feel he's settled in really really well and he's, you know, he's got a lot to his game um, so I was really really pleased and I think when you bring players like that in Obviously, the player that's left, you miss him even less, don't you? Because the player that's come in is doing even better. Yeah. Um, so i d delighted and I'm not too disappointed with the departures either. Mm. That's a 50th league win for Ange Postacoglu. Only Martin O'Neill, I think, has done it quicker. And again, that speaks volumes for the consistency that he's brought and the standards that he sets for the team because week in and week out, the attitude and the application is always there. Um, and again, another win today, it's just about ticking off these games now with the lead we've got. Yeah, for a long time, even under Martin O'Neill and... That, Absolutely idolise Martin O'Neill, um, some great, great memories. But what I love about this team is it's so unpredictable. You know, you just do not know where the pass is going, don't know what player's going to score the goal, who's going to be your man of the match. There's just strength and depth throughout the whole team now. Um, and I just absolutely love his style of play. I love the energy, the energy in the team and the substitutions we've talked about week in, week out. We'll talk about again today. But the strength of the substitutions is incredible. Uh, any, any candidates for man of the match other than Aaron Moy? Um, I've said in recent weeks I don't think the guy that scores the goal should always necessarily get man <laughs> of the match but I think Aaron Moy I mean the, the fans are singing his name tonight at the end of the game um, singing it throughout the game as well he's just become a real fans favourite for me he was, he was brilliant today Aaron Moy yep. yeah Aaron Moy for me as well there you go the hoops are back to 9 points clear at the top of the league like this video comment with your own thoughts on the performance below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you during the week for the build up to that game against Livingston thank you